Talking about a bit of a delusion sounds Don't you know what? Talking about a bit of a delusion sounds Today is Tuesday, the 17th day of June, and if you can hear the sound of my voice, then you are the revolution. My name is Smoking Joe McKay, and this is the Revolutionary Nightly News. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for tuning into this worldwide transmission. I've got a jam-packed show for you today. I'd like to thank all of my family, friends, and fans for helping me celebrate my 30th birthday on the weekend. And this has made me realize I'm not down to play around anymore. I've drawn my line in the sand and I am in this 100%. I am 100% committed. This is the point from which I will never return. And if I back down now, then forever I burn. This is the point from which I will never retreat. Because if I turn back now, there will never be peace. This is the point from which I will die and succeed, live in the struggle. I know I'm alive when I bleed from now on. Things will never be the same as before because the place that I'm from doesn't exist anymore. To quote the great immortal technique. And that's it. This is my point of no return. I am in this 100%. So let's do this. We're talking today about rights and in particular gun rights. This was brought to my attention most recently by the fact that that coward Obama who has killed millions and millions of people all over the world, recently made reference to the fact that Australia has a total gun ban now off the back of the Port Arthur Massacre back in 1996, which was in fact a staged false flag event. This guy, Martin Bryant, who supposedly killed 35 people in 90 seconds. This guy had the IQ of 66. He had the mental age of an 11 year old. And they wanna say that this guy killed 35 people with such horrendous, terrifying precision. Now I'm gonna play this clip from that clown Illuminati puppet Obama to see exactly what he says about it. Woo! I, I have to say that uh... People often ask me, you know, how's it been being president, and you know, what are my, uh, you know, what am I proudest of, and, and what are my biggest uh, disappointments? And yeah, I've got two and a half years left. Uh, my biggest frustration so far is the fact that uh, this society has not been willing to take some basic steps to, uh, to keep guns out of the hands of uh, you know, people who you know, can, uh, can do just unbelievable damage. We're, we're, the only society, we're, we're the only developed country on earth where this happens. And it, it happens now once a week. And it, it's a one-day story. 
There's no place else like this. A couple of decades ago, Australia uh, had a mass shooting, mm -hmm. uh, similar to Columbine or, or Newtown. Uh, and Australia just said, well, that's it. We're, we're not, doing, we're not do seeing that again. Yeah. And uh, basically imposed very severe, tough uh, gun laws. And they've never, they haven't had a mass shooting since. I mean, our levels of gun violence are off the charts. There's no advanced developed country on earth that would put up with this. Now, we have a different tradition. We have a Second Amendment. We have uh, historically uh, respected gun rights. I respect gun rights. But the idea that, for example, we couldn't even get a background check bill in to make sure that if you're going to buy a weapon, you have to yeah. actually go through a fairly rigorous process so that we know who you are, so that you can't just walk up to a store and uh, buy a semi-automatic weapon. Um, it, it makes no sense. And, and I don't know if, if, if anybody saw the, uh, the the brief press conference from the, the father of the young man who had been killed at Santa Barbara. And as a father myself, I, I just, I could not understand the pain he must be going through. And just the, 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 the primal scream that, that he gave out. Well, why, are, why aren't we doing something about this? Can you believe the arrogance? Can you believe the hubris from this piece of trash? sitting there with a smirk on his face talking about what they're going to do to stop these gun laws when he and his armies have killed millions and millions all over the world. It disgusts me that this piece of garbage has this power. And now he's trying to use another shooting in the United States to implement further gun laws. Now the United States is very blessed that that country's constitution was written at the peak or it was the product, the flower of the Renaissance, of the Enlightenment, the Enlightenment movement, of liberty. And they enshrine in their constitution in the Second Amendment the fact that every individual has the right to keep and bear arms and that right shall not be infringed. But there have been so many false flag shootings in America, speaking of Sandy Hook, Aurora, so many more that I'm going to list later on. So many of these shootings are people who are actually working for intelligence agencies and it comes out in public that they work for intelligence agencies. For the fact, it comes out that they actually are on antidepressant drugs and a whole cocktail of drugs in some instances that makes them absolutely psychotic. I'm going to touch now on the 1996 shooting allegedly by Martin Bryant in Tasmania where 35 people were killed and this is crazy because this is Obama's dream like he said in this clip once this happened in Australia there is there was a uniform gun ban and now you need to get all type of special hunting or sporting permits to have a firearm in Australia you can't have a firearm for self defense Australia has been unarmed disarmed by the elite but they haven't disarmed our minds they haven't disarmed our fists, they haven't disarmed our hearts. And I'm reaching out to you now to put aside the fear about guns. I know a lot of people with cowardly tendencies say that you should ban all guns because I don't want anyone coming up in the street and attacking me. Well, you know what? I don't want to live in a world where people are slaves to the government. I would much rather people have weapons instead of the government having the monopoly on weapons and killing people and kidnapping people and destroying lives en masse. Let's just touch on a few of the things from the Port Arthur shootings. Now there was actually a quote by former New South Wales Premier Barry Unsworth in December 1987 at a conference in Hobart. And he said, there will never be uniform gun laws in Australia until we see a massacre somewhere in Tasmania. How prophetic. And this is exactly like the New World Order 
Illuminati clowns who always try and put forward some type of predictive, predictive programming and they talk about what they're going to do before they do it. And this is a really obvious example of that. To quote Brigadier Ted Sarong DSO OBE, the former head of Australian Defence Forces in Vietnam and one of the world's leading experts on counter-terrorist techniques. He said in an interview with the Sydney Morning Herald on the 10th of April 1999, Martin Bryant could not have been responsible for the mass murder at Port Arthur. There was an almost satanic accuracy to that shooting performance. Whosoever did it is better than I am, and there are not too many people around here better than I am. Whoever did it had skills way beyond anything that could reasonably be expected of this chap Bryant. If it was someone of only average skills, there would have been many less killed and many more wounded. It was the astonishing proportion of killed to wounded that made me open my eyes first off. This Bryant guy has an IQ of 66, mental age of 11, like I said before. And this follows the history of governments using mentally handicapped, mentally unstable people to carry out their dirty work and use them as patsies. And it worked in this instance because now you can't have a gun in Australia. The government has monopoly on the guns. The government and criminals. I don't want the government to have a monopoly on force. They have no authority over me. They have no authority over you. There is nothing that says one group of human beings has the right to kidnap, torture, kill other people. And another group of human beings must do their bidding Otherwise, they risk being kidnapped or tortured or killed. That's not going to fly. We're breaking this paradigm of government control. If you're tuning into this transmission, you understand that you are a free man. You're a free woman. Your family's free. Your friends are free. And you shouldn't bow down to anyone. You have the right to defend yourself and your family. Survivor Wendy Skur said there's a hell of a cover-up that has occurred and she's pushing for an inquiry. You can look up yourself exactly how ludicrous it is that this guy, Martin Bryant, killed 35 people in 90 seconds, as is the official government story in the Port Arthur Massacre. That being said, in Australia, the people have already been disarmed, and Obama is pushing for the same thing to happen in America. But I'm going to tell you, we, the people, have a right to defend ourselves. I've told you the story before, and when I was 18, somebody pulled a gun on me when I was delivering pizza. I said, give me your money. And I said, bring it on. We have the right to defend ourselves. And we have the right to defend ourselves against people who are acting violently towards us. You see, when someone instigates force against you and you didn't do anything to them, that is violence. You have been violated from the Latin violare. If you use force to defend yourself against someone who is committing violence against you, that's not violence. Somebody attacks you on the street, you have every right to bash their brains in. Somebody pulls a gun on you, you have every right to shoot them back. If the government tries to come after you, you have every right to defend yourself. And this is what's happening in the United States. They're one of the few countries besides Switzerland in the world to have a right to keep and bear arms codified into their law. And that's a real blessing for them. But they're trying, the people in power are trying to take that away from them. Now I'm going to show you something from Mark Passio, who's a brilliant teacher. And the way he breaks down violence as opposed to force is very uh, succinct, so I'd like to break that down with you. You can check out Mark Passio's stuff right here. It's brilliant. Now, force is the capacity to do work or cause physical change. Energy, strength, and power. Force is action which is in harmony with morality and natural law because it does not violate others' rights. Force is action which one always possesses the right to take, which includes defense against violence. Now, like I said before, if you're being attacked, if someone else is being attacked, you have the right to defend them using any means necessary. 
And we are under attack right now, ladies and gentlemen. We are under attack chemically, biologically, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, radiologically. We're under attack on almost every level by people who are attacking our very genome, by people who are attacking, attacking the structure of our DNA, the people who are trying to make us sick, weak, and dependent. But we're breaking through that. We're using force to counteract the violence that's being perpetrated upon our bodies every day with sodium fluoride in the water, with chemtrails in the air, with genetically modified food, with microwaves coming out of every mobile device. All right, now let me contrast force with violence, which is what the government does. Violence is the immoral use of physical power to coerce, compel, or restrain. That's what they do every single day. They threaten you with physical violence. Either you pay a percentage of your wages, of your income to the government, you've got to give them money, or they're going to commit violence against you and throw you in jail. That's the way it is. That's not the way it should be. I don't owe them anything. You don't owe them anything. They are a parasitic plague upon the people of this planet. The government is illegitimate. And the belief in authority is illegitimate. And you understand that in your heart. I know that you do. That's why you're tuned into this transmission. They have no right to tell you what to do. They have no right to threaten you with force unless you follow their rules. They're not rules. They're made up systems of control designed to enslave you. But we're breaking free of the chains right here, right now. Violence is the initiation of coercive action, which is in opposition to morality and natural law because it involves the violation of others' rights. Every single day they violate our rights. They say we have no right to keep and bear arms, no right to defend ourselves. Every single day they trample on our rights. And we need to stand up and reclaim our natural rights. We have the right to do anything as long as it doesn't inflict upon the rights of others. We have the right to defend ourselves. And if we don't stand up and defend ourselves, the future is going to be a boot stamping on a human face for eternity. To quote George Orwell in 1984, but I see a different future. I feel a different future. I believe in a different future because I believe in you and I believe in the power of the human spirit. And I believe when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. And we're going through that transition right now, you and me together. Violence is action which one never possesses the right to take. And that's what I'm saying right here. The government is illegitimate. They got no rights. They got no right to tell you what to do. They got no right to poison your food, water, air, and medicine. They have no right to steal money from you, to extort you. They have no right to lock you up, no matter what you've done. You have the right to do anything, as long as it doesn't infringe on the rights of other people. I want you to spread this message. I want you to talk to people. Who cares about television? Seriously, who cares about Game of Thrones? Who cares about these sitcoms? Who cares about My Kitchen Rules? Who cares about the state of origin? I don't care about this stuff anymore. I am in this for real. And I hope that you're in it as well. I want you to spread this message far and wide. We are in the information war together and we are in the revolution together. I know that if we spread this message, more people are going to wake up from their comas. More people are going to understand what their natural rights are. More people are going to feel what their natural power is. And I believe and declare that together we will defeat the people who seek to control the world and that the revolution will prevail. Woo! Yeah! Haha. <laughs>